All right, well, here it is all together. Looking way better than uh, having the holes in the bottom there. Um, it was some work, but uh, at the end, it's worth it. So, uh, yeah, it's looking... Um, it's looking great now with the um, with the painted uh, channel selector. Um, I think that this is a, a better look uh, overall for the radio, and uh, yeah, it's just um, still uh, I still need to wire in the uh, mode um, selector switch because uh, right now it's by default it's set to lower sideband, um, but I'm just um, waiting to get a confirmation uh from uh troy's radio on um some voltage settings that um i'm kind of um confused about um but i just want to confirm uh how to wire in this thing properly because these old radios have weird voltages um you know it's not like the newer style radios where you know you have five volt eight volts you know and then you're 13.8 volts uh this thing here is pretty much uh, almost every circuit is running uh, at 13.8 volts. So um, based on the wiring uh, directions uh, for the DDS VFO, um, I'm thinking that um, the mode selector needs to be uh, wired a bit differently. So I'm just waiting for him to confirm. But uh, yeah, so it's, um, it's looking um, looking good, I think. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the owner is going to, um, really like this, the way, um, the way it's set up. Um, but yeah, you can go through the settings here and, uh, so some settings you have to hold, hold the encoder in, um, Sometimes you have to just hold it in for a few seconds and then let it go, and then other times it's just uh, you know quick press. But um, yeah, this is um, um, a really nice setup. So I do have the clarifier. Um, actually, let's go back to uh, channel mode. You can see it defaults to lower sideband automatically, but I do have the clarifier uh, wired in already, and um, you know, so that's I'm getting there. It's getting there. So um, yeah. So as far as inside goes, um, I'm gonna wait to recap it until I make sure that everything is working properly. Um, not that I'm scared of, you know, doing everything all at once, but for my own sake, I'd rather just, um, you know, make sure that everything is working. So this radio was working before, so, um, you know, I have no reason to, um, you know, doubt the recapping, but what I'd like to do is I just like to do one thing at a time, um, you know, and that way I can kind of eliminate any variables um you know in um you know my work so once i get this completely wired in and i, I know that it transmits and it receives um everything is mounted properly um you know i make sure that all the circuits are working the meters are working um i'll go ahead and recap it that'll, that'll be the last thing i do um obviously um before a an alignment so um yeah the alignment will be the the very last thing i do because this still does need to be uh, aligned um you know you still go through all the cans and stuff um but um anyway yeah i just wanted to do a quick uh part two um on uh how it came out and um the only mark i really see is this one here that's that's how it came um you know this it, it is what it is but um it's a lot better than having all the holes in the bottom um so yeah that's where we're at right now so i'm going to continue on with this um, I'm going to get the, um, the clock board or the RF generator board, um, mounted, uh, properly and, uh, yeah, just, uh, continue on. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. All right. So after trying to messing around, I guess, with, um, bringing this voltage back down to a, uh, 
an acceptable level for the DDS VFO, um, I came to the conclusion that it was um, not impossible, but I think it's just better to regulate the voltage going into the actual DDS VFO uh, rather than trying to regulate the whole radio. Um, so what I did was, on some uh, prototyping board here, uh, I just made an, a simple 8 volt um, voltage regulator. So the blue wire, you can see it's right there, the blue wire gets almost 15 volts, um, comes into the 7808 uh, voltage regulator, and that's a uh, um, JRC, um, that's a brand name uh, regulator, you know, it's not one of the ones you get in the kit from eBay or um, uh, what else? Uh, Amazon or something, you know, that, that's that's a really nice regulator. Should last um, with two decoupling uh, capacitors. And then coming out, so the black here is the common, and the yellow is voltage out. So that's a regulated 8 volts, and that's going right to the um, DDS VFO. So now we have... Um, you know, a regulated eight volts. So no matter what the voltage is at, uh, the radio's putting out from that transistor down there. Sorry, it's a little blurry, but um, the DDS VFO will always get eight volts. Um, so I'm happy with that now. Uh, I wasn't comfortable, um, nor do I think anybody would be comfortable, um, you know, putting 15 volts to something like that. So, um, but anyway, that's, that's done now. Uh, yeah, these these regulators are easy to do. Um, you know, there's not a it's not rocket science. Uh, and I also put in a um, a green LED to indicate that it's working. So I put it on the eight volt side. Um, you know, just to have like some sort of indication that it is um, working. So, so now it's working uh, on its own power. I just put a, uh, an angle bracket here. So in case anybody's wondering, I get these at Digi DigiKey. And uh, that's what they're called. And um, yeah, that's the, the, uh, the part number there. 36-621-ND. And they're just... So this isn't metric. So these are uh, 440 uh, threaded, um, which is probably the equivalent of like a 3 millimeter. Uh, which is what you'll find in most of these radios. Um, but they're already threaded, so you don't need like a nut on the other side. Um, and then I get these um, screws here, uh, 440 uh, pan heads. You can get, uh, I don't know, they're, they're not that expensive. Um, obviously, if you don't do a lot of different radios or whatever, it's not worth buying them. Um, but I, I go through these quite often. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to use two more uh, for the uh, clock board here. And uh, find a good spot for that. But they come in handy. Um, I, I use them quite often. But uh, anyway, so now we can actually turn this on. Um, and not worry about the radio actually, um, you know, over, getting an overvolt on the, uh, overvoltage on the uh, DDS VFO, so, now it's, um, now I, I, I feel a lot happier knowing that, that that has an 8 volt, um, regulated source now, so, yeah, that's, um, that's as far as I've gotten so far, and, uh, so there's not much left, uh, again, I gotta wire up the mode, um, and I got to, uh, connect the, um, this, uh, RF generator or this clock, uh, this clock board. So this is basically going to be a coax cable going from here to, uh, where one of the crystals used to be. And that's, that's pretty much easy, an easy thing. And then I have, uh, I think I have like a scan wire. There's a few other circuits here that, um, um, Roger Beep is one of them. Um, scan is another one of them. And then um, this, these two wires here are PTT. So basically this gets, um, this will interrupt that PTT circuit. 
uh, for the microphone. But that's about it so far. So um, I think that's it for part two. When you guys see uh, part three, probably be the last, um, the last of this um, series of videos. But uh, so far, so good. Thanks for watching. All right. So before somebody asks why there's not a heat sink um, on the back of that uh, voltage regulator. So these regulators are, volta are uh, rated for 35 volts max, um, and it's going to regulate it down to 8 volts. So how does it do that? Uh, one of the side effects, I guess you could say, of it is heat. And these things will put out a lot of heat. But because it's only reducing voltage from 15 down to 8, um, as what I was told... Um, the temperature, so these things have an operating temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. So coming from 15 volts down to 8 volts, this thing will never even come close to that. Um, so if it were something, you know, closer to like 35 volts, which it's where it's, it's max, uh, input voltages. Yeah. Then I'd probably put like a little aluminum heat sink, uh, behind that. Um, but yeah, if anybody's wondering why. Um, yeah, that's why there's no heat sink behind there. Uh, it's not needed in this case.